Today, 15 things every reefer should know about the science of calcium, alkalinity, and reef tanks. Well, we wish somebody had told us day one. Direct answer is there's calcium and carbonate alkalinity ions dissolved in your tank's water. Corals pull them out to build their skeletal structure. And yes, those levels of calcium alkalinity control growth rates. You can use today's knowledge to fill out the tank faster or even slow it down if desired. And there are better ways than others. All that's coming up. Number two, elevated levels absolutely produce faster growth. We did some pretty extensive testing here and we found 71.62%, mind you, that 0.62 is important, more growth. And that's exponential growth because if your coral grows 70% in one month, then all of that coral will produce 70% more growth the next month. And that just keeps going and going and going and going. And why some people are able to fill out their tank in a matter of 18 months and some people may take five years. I know which one you would like to be. But I also know that some people at the five year mark where the thing's full would actually like to slow, slow it down. It down. Uh, and just so you know, the elevated levels are basically the same levels you would find in the Red Sea blue bucket versus black bucket, yep. the black bucket being elevated. Now, we didn't test those salts against each other. We we're just testing, you know, levels, levels. around there. Uh, and uh, that's what we found, just way, way, way faster growth. And if you're wondering, you know, was it magnesium, calcium, or alkalinity? Everyone here believes it was the alkalinity and maybe the magnesium and calcium <laughs> don't even really matter uh, when it's elevated. Because going from like, you know, 400 some to 500 some is like a 20% yeah. increase. Uh, but if I go from 70kh to uh, 12, I mean, we're approaching more, almost double yeah. the amount Crazy of amount more. alkalinity in there. And alkalinity is the scarcest one of them to begin with. And so it's that alkalinity that everybody believes is turbocharging the growth. Number three, something a little surprising is those elevated levels that we saw in our test, they actually produced better coloration in our corals as well. Didn't see that coming at all, uh, but it was pretty consistent. Many, many, many of the corals and not just like one coral, but the replicas. Uh, and we did A-B tests of systems and replicas of those systems with replicas of the corals in them. And it was pretty clear that the elevated levels actually did produce better coloration in many of the corals Surprise, surprise. Number four, those elevated levels produce more microorganism growth as well, which makes a lot of sense because what do a lot of those microorganisms need? Calcium and alkalinity. Yeah, uh, that was, uh, I guess, I call it a surprise, but we probably should have known better and just <laughs> saw it coming. If the corals are gonna grow faster, everything that's calcifying in the tank, and it was night and day. You know, the back of the tank's just covered in spiorbid worms and microcrustaceans, and the other one less so. So you just see signs of this all over the place that when you increase the available calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, and probably just the alkalinity is really the important one, well, everything just calcifies faster. Number five, I stole thunder on this, but I got a couple more details. Yeah, really important here. Again, it's probably the alkalinity that's spurring that growth, not necessarily the calcium and magnesium. So the, for those of you who don't know, there's like, you know, somewhere in between like five, six, seven times as much alkalinity or calcium as alkalinity in the yep. water. Alkalinity is just fairly scarce. And so it depletes fairly, fairly rapidly. And that's actually why we say all the time, and if you're going to test one thing, let it be alkalinity, yep. right? Because you can actually see the alkalinity drop from, you know, nine to eight DKH in a single day. Really quickly. In a really robust tank in two, right? Yep. Uh, in the same time, you know, you'd see like, unmeasurable amounts of calcium <laughs> drop. You wouldn't be able to pick up what it dropped in a test kit in a single day. Uh, it's just because there's so little of it in there. And so when you double the amount of it, we're gonna dramatically increase the growth rates as well. Number six, again, Ryan already touched on this one, but you can likely see the effect of those elevated levels the quickest by testing and measuring for your alkalinity uptake. And really that is because alkalinity rises and falls really, really quickly with biological uptake. So it's one of the best ways to see how much uptake is happening with your corals. So one of the things that we did early on was, hey, we elevate the levels and then you quickly find out when you elevate the levels that calcium and alkalinity actually drops on a daily basis faster mm -hmm. and you need to increase your daily dose. Now that could be one of two things. One, um, well, when I raise the levels up, all of a sudden things are just growing faster and they're pulling more of it out of the water. So now I need to dose more every day. 
or it could have been precipitation. That was always the question. But after all of our experiments, we just found that it wasn't the precipitation <laughs> thing. It was actually the corals were growing faster again because we monitor them for months, both visually by size, but also by weight. And these corals just grow way, way faster. And if you really want to know, you know, raise their levels up. Don't do it all in one swing, but raise your levels up and you'll find that your normal dose of two part doesn't work anymore. You have to up it because the corals are just growing faster. Number seven, elevated levels can actually ride that biological razor's edge, but Ryan has a little more info on that one. Yeah, basically what you're going to do here is, yeah, we're gonna calcify way, way faster. It's obvious, we've got it in the data, but what we also found was the tissue growth now needs to keep up with that. Yeah. So basically every single biological function now needs to keep up with the fact that this coral is growing so fast and building so much uh, skeletal uh, structure so fast. So like lighting's on the edge, uh, like uh, we're gonna have uh, uh, like nitrogen and phosphorus yeah. and amino acids and protein and energy production. All these things need to be right on the razor's mm -hmm. edge. And in fact, one of the things that we found was when after we did the test, we uh, went on and tested uh, uh, dosing amino acids in yeah. the tank. And amino acids are basically the building blocks of protein, which is the building blocks of tissue. And then when we added the amino acids, all of a sudden the tissue was way healthier. The coloration got yeah. even better. So note that like when you turbocharge something, the rest of it has to come along with and one of the reasons why we don't actually recommend riding that razor's edge of like 12 DKH, <laughs> you might want to tone it down a bit. All right, number eight, there's a theme here. <laughs> it's okay, it's an important theme. When people talk about stability in their tanks, which we talk about all the time, and I stress a lot to beginners especially, really what we're talking about is we're talking about alkalinity. And that's just because there is a lot less alkalinity in the tank, which means it can get depleted a lot quicker. This is one of those things that the mentality or science of this has changed since I started reefing because in the beginning it was all about calcium. I don't know why, but everybody said calcium, everybody said uh, magnesium mm -hmm. and then alkalinity was like somewhere in the distance. Uh, and that is just like totally flipped its head. Uh, magnesium, people test like once a month. Calcium, <laughs> like maybe once a week. And alkalinity, like some of the most advanced reefers are doing it daily, okay. at least like a really good pulse on this thing. So uh, if there's one thing you pick out of this video, it's uh, definitely alkalinity matters most uh, than the rest. And they'll actually, the trends of alkalinity will give you pulses on the other two as well. Number nine, alkalinity is totally different. It really is more of an educated guess as to how much carbonate and bicarbonate we have in the system. Yeah, calcium and magnesium are like basically counting ions. Yeah. You know, 1,350 parts per million magnesium, uh, direct measurement. Alkalinity is actually something totally different. Uh, it is a measurement of your tank's ability to buffer acid. Yeah. That isn't a thing. There isn't no. actually a thing. Just turns out that most of the tank's ability to buffer acid is carbonate and bicarbonate, which you need to build that calcium carbonate structure uh, or skeletal structure. So when we're measuring alkalinity, uh, we're some degree measuring the tank's ability to buffer acid, but more importantly than that, it has nothing really to do with the acid. It's just giving us a pulse on how much of that carbonate and bicarbonate is in the water. And so the reason that's important is all this stuff we talked about earlier is when we double the amount of carbonate and bicarbonate in the water, all of a sudden we get way, way, way faster growth. And the inverse is true too. Uh, if the alkalinity is really low, that means A, the water is probably going to be acidic, but also it means there's barely any of the carbonate and bicarbonate that was already scarce. And then growth rates are gonna tank. You may even have some mortalities. Number 10, it's probably a decent idea to assume your test kits are gonna be off around 5%. I mean, that's just pretty normal for any sort of hobby grade test kit. But at the end of the day, what really matters is consistency. Can you keep a consistent number? I mean, if it's 400 versus 425 calcium, does it really matter? Maybe not as long as you're consistent with your testing procedure and the results. And most test kits are consistent. Yeah. Like if I got 420 today, if I followed the procedure the same tomorrow, it would be the same. Now, this is really a hard pill to swallow because I see a lot of reefers chasing like the accuracy dragon, you know, like just like hoping that they can somehow going to get it down yeah. to like 1% uh, difference. And you know what? I mean, 5% on 420 is, you know, close to 20 parts per million yeah. off, right? Uh, and so it could be 420, it could be 400. That isn't going to change your success rates uh, dramatically, uh, especially if it's consistent each time. And this is one of the reasons why we tend to go a little high 
you know, not as high as like Red Sea Black Bucket, yeah. but we go a little high to uh, like allow for procedure mistakes. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, the test kit may not be perfect every last time. Uh, all these different things. And the reality is, is procedure, you know, does matter in these. Some of them like are really prone to procedural mistakes and some of them really don't matter. For instance, if you're, if it says like spin it for 60 seconds, I bet less than maybe 10% are actually setting the timer on yeah. their phone, right? Most are like, hmm, feels like about 60 seconds. Could have been 30, could have been a minute and a half, who knows. Uh, and I'm definitely changing the end result in many cases with that. So, you know, just know when we're chasing down this thing, it's more about getting consistent results than absolute assurity that you nailed the number because that's probably just not going to happen. Number 11, people always ask us, what are our recommended parameters? And really we shoot for somewhere around 450 calcium, nine DKH, and a magnesium level of around 1350. What that approach does is gives you reasonable accuracy expectations and inevitable issues. It provides a buffer for those things. So you can go a little bit in each direction. You know, if I had a nine DKH, you know, I'm really probably safe going all the way to 11. I'm really probably safe going all the way to seven. Smart. But if I did seven and I messed up either the test kit or my alkalinity container yeah. ran dry for a few days, now. I didn't notice. Yeah, I'm at five. Yeah. Or if I was at 12 and somehow I messed this up and now it's like 14 or yeah. 15, like now probably I'm in the danger zone. So we're not always chasing like the most like growth possible. Yeah. We're also not chasing like the lowest levels possible. If you find it in the middle is actually where you're probably going to find the most mistakes because you will make mistakes over time, both in procedural uh, elements and I don't know, a single reefer has never let their two part container run dry yeah. at one point in time. Yeah, so, I have. you know, own those things and you'll be more successful. 450 calcium, 9 DKH and 1350 magnesium is what we use. Number 12, consistency and stability are more important than accuracy. Now, I know that might sound like a little bit of heresy, but it's probably true. I'll give you a good example of that. Uh, with the nitrate test kit, uh, the Red Sea one for me is the most accurate that we've tested. We actually made a bunch of different samples of nitrate and seawater. We tested all of them to put it through the Hawk 30, yep. a DR3900. We All these different things, and definitely the Red Sea was the best. However, it was like a really long test. It was a little bit harder to read and why we actually had to use the photo meter to yeah. actually read More it. More errors could be introduced during the process. Yeah, it was just a, a lot of work. And so I, like, we didn't all read the results the same uh, out of it. Well, meanwhile, with the NIOS test kit, which was a lot easier and didn't have as many steps to uh, yeah. mess it up, well, that one, 10 out of 10 reefers would all read the results the same. same way. Yeah, and you'd read them from one time to the next the same. There's just not as many like areas to mess it up. So if it were me, uh, I would pick the one that 10 out of 10 reefers read and uses the same over absolute accuracy that could be messed up. Number 13, one brand is not necessarily the best at every single test, but we have some favorites. It's hard to not like embrace Salaford as a favorite. Red Sea is a favorite. And if I like <laughs> one, just like buy their whole line. Uh, and to be frank, I understand why, because if you like one, you might as well trust the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, here, we've had the opportunity to test them all. Uh, and the way that we tested them actually was we took like five different reefers or actually it was two of them weren't reefers. Two of them were kind of mediocre reefers and two expert That's reefers. Smart. We had them all perform all of these tests and we looked for consistency uh, within not only amongst each other, but they had to perform the test three times and not mm. in sequence. Uh, they had to come rope tape back. Yeah. Did they get the same results? And uh, honestly, some were just better. And the top of that for us was the Red Sea Calcium was actually the best of uh, uh, consistency there. Uh, Hannah Alkalinity Checker by far, uh, like everybody got the exact same reading every mm -hmm. time. Uh, and it was uh, in the median as well. And then the Aquaforest Magnesium Test oh, interesting. Yeah, was our favorite there. So if you aren't a stickler for having one brand for everything, Red Sea Calcium, Hannah Alkalinity Checker and Aquaforest Magnesium was our favorites. Number 14, really important for you beginners out there. When a test kit flashes one color, but then it changes back to another, it's not done. 
it's still mixing. So if you start out with a blue mixture and you add a drop and it flashes pink, but then it flashes right back to blue, you're not done. You got to keep going. I've been there, had that frustration <laughs> in the beginning, man. Like, I don't want to change color. What do I do? Uh, <laughs> is that what it? Or should I drop some more in there? You know, who knows? And that's kind of getting back to the like the procedural bit. Like, there's definitely a five percent error just from like one or two drops different. Yes. You know, uh, and so what's happening there is it is a pH indicating dye that is you know inside that solution. And when you're dropping in the the reagent, it's changing the pH. And then what will happen is like right at the top that like solution or reagent goes in there and it will change the pH enough that right at the top, it will yeah. change the color. But as you keep mixing, you know, it gets diluted throughout the entire sample and then not enough to change the sample to that color. So you got to keep dropping in until it does. Now, unless your instructions explicitly state, you know, hey, uh, the first flash, then that's the endpoint, then that's the endpoint. If uh, it says that it needs to stay that color, well, then it definitely needs to stay that color. But the reality is a lot of these things don't even state at all. In that case, you should just assume it needs to get to the oh, end okay. point. Uh, one of the really cool, easy ways to do that I is this, this Auto Aqua Smart Stir. Great. And basically it has this little pill in the bottom here and uh, you hit the button and it spins. Now what this is designed for is a little Red Sea vial mm -hmm. that goes in here. And now when I hit this thing uh, and it's got my reagent in it, I can just drop, 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 drop. And you'll actually never see it change back color because it's mixing so, so well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is a really, really great solution. And now if you're wondering like, what if I use that uh, magnesium test kit from uh, uh, Aquaforest though? Well, you know what? You can actually just pick up a vial from yeah. uh, Red Sea or maybe even have one from old Red Sea mm -hmm. test kit. And then it fits right in this thing. Once you use this, for people who do tritation uh, test kits, once you use this, you'll never go back. It's never. really, really slick. And it gets around that issue of when the test kit flashes, it's probably not done. Number 15, people who monitor alkalinity daily are more in tune with the biology and chemistry of their tank. And because of that, their tanks are going to do better. I don't talk in absolutes very often, but this one I will. If you monitor alkalinity daily, your tank will probably have three to four times better outcome than people that don't. Now, nothing's an absolute certainty. No. All you can do is influence uh, a direction. And if you're doing alkalinity every day, the little hand of checker makes it like a one minute task. It's so fast. Yeah, really easy. And even if you did it every other day, you know, same kind of thing, but every month not. Uh, <laughs> and this is the reason why is because everything bad that I do in the tank will harm the corals biology and cause it to take up less uh, calcium and alkalinity. And alkalinity is the one I can measure in real yep. time. Everything good I do for the tank will actually cause it to uptake more calcium and alkalinity yep. uh, because uh, it's a benefit to the biology of the animal. So when I measure alkalinity, I mean, just down to really simple things. Like if I start dosing amino acids and stuff, sometimes I'll watch this go up. If I change the lights, yeah. you know, add two hours onto one end, well, one of two things can happen. One, I'll stress the corals out with too much light and the calcium alkalinity actually goes down. Yeah. Or two, I'm adding more energy to the matrix here. And because of that, they actually calcify faster and they'll take up more calcium alkalinity. So everything good and bad for the most part can be measured in alkalinity and why if you do it daily, you'll probably have just way better success than most. After this entire conversation, my number one takeaway is absolutely alkalinity is crucial. If you're going to do one thing, pick up the HANA alkalinity checker. I have used mine for years. I actually probably start buying the alkalinity reagent in bulk now because it's so easy to test. It literally takes me maybe two minutes to take it out, test it, and put it back. And you can tell so much about the health of your tank from that one simple test. And you know what, if you're like, you know what, that's way too much for me. Well, there's solutions out there like the Apex Trident. Mm -hmm. There's also one for GHL and there's also the uh, Aquatronic. Ma Aquatronic, Mastertronic. Mastertronic. Yeah. Uh, so there's options out there for you. They'll actually like do it for, do you. It for you every <laughs> single day, graph yeah. it, tell you alarms on your phone if something goes wrong. So uh, it doesn't have to be something you do manual. It can be automatic as well. All right, my number one takeaway is I've actually been doing this for many years. In fact, you can measure it now in decades. <laughs> uh, and the reality is, is no one knows what is biologically perfect, you know, in terms of calcium mm -hmm. and alkalinity levels. But I do know that 450 calcium, 9 DKH alkalinity, and 1350 magnesium are biologically and procedurally safe.
What's next? Time to learn how to select the right calcium and alkalinity solution for your tank and get it right the first time. And all of our best of calcium and alkalinity playlists are right here.